I'll tell you, I feel like a real idiot. I was so convinced that that was just a missile test that everybody saw. I'm a fool. Thank God for the investigative journalism team that exists on Facebook and exposed the conspiracy that is, obviously, aliens came to see us with virtually no impact at all. And stupid Facebook tried to keep them from uh, exposing the truth. But fortunately, ah, oh, fortunately they forged on and exposed the government for what they are. Thank you, Facebook community. Hi, this is Charles. Uh... You are full of bullshit, my friend. I will sue you for everything you have. I will sue your ass. Welcome to 86 Charles. With your hosts, John Darby and Travis Spencer. And with that, welcome to 86 Charles. Travis Spencer, good to see you, hear you. I wish I could say the same thing, but you're so angry. Is everything, are you all right? I am all right. I, I was just a little angrier than I anticipated. I expected more sarcasm, but the anger came through. It was a fantastic, it was a fantastic spectacle. You know, and what do you, it just depends on your mindset right away. Like, I'm versed enough in alien and reptilian theory that I know. Like, it's, I'm not going to bat an eye at that. Right. But for these newcomers, give them a break, bro. Damn rookies. Rookies. But it's it's the people that come through like, hey, Facebook, they're going to pull this video off. Make sure you share it. There's aliens, and they're saying it's missiles. Y you didn't crack the case, Sherlock. You're probably half drunk at your job, and saw something weird i get it people are looking for it's just clickbait you know did you click on it no i didn't need to the first thing i saw yeah, was a picture I, and i was content with that i saw a video eventually and i expected it to be I more impressive than it was actually right did you actually see it no 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 you were at work so you were i'm sure because it was it. when was it saturday night yeah yeah no i was definitely at work so i walked outside and like the sky was this eerie blue and i'm on the other side of like Big Bear of the San Gorgonio Mountains. You like that? Yeah, that was awesome. My, you like my geography? <laughs> uh, so, and there was this like, there was like this big, it wasn't a big, but it was just like a single cloud in the sky that like was illuminated by it. So it was weird. I didn't actually see that. I just saw the cloud illuminated in this really eerie blue. And I was like, is the moon behind it? Like, that's what I thought at first, but it clearly wasn't the moon. So it, it looked cool. And people like, I talked to people that night, and they're like, oh, I guess it's over. It's all over. This is the aliens. And then by the time we got to Facebook, it was like, I read for like three seconds. I saw it was a missile test, and I was like, that's it. Like, why? I'm not going to follow it any further than that. If, yeah. if the military comes out and says it was a missile test, but they can't announce these things because you can't have a, the, the world freaking out that you're about to do a missile test. Right. You need to run the missile test and let them freak out. There's obviously some decision-making in why you would do it right over L.A., and why, you know, it's it's a something they run a test. It's a test. I'm, a I'm test. convinced that the government what would happen tells in a big us exactly city. what the government wants us to know. So when they say exactly. it's a missile test. Why would test, they do anything else? Do I think that there's other things at play, other politics involved? Yeah, sure. Of course, there's there's more to it than that. And why they did it then. I, Saturday in the middle of, not even the middle of the night. Saturday kind of early evening, they decide to do that. You, you you could right. easily do that during the middle of the week, in the middle of the night, when no one would see it, if that's what you wanted. But they wanted people to see it, so I get it. Right. Like you're going to spend $44 million or whatever it costs to launch that thing without meticulously planning each and every detail of the whole thing. And they're and they're monitoring social media. They're monitoring everything yeah. they want. It's it's all planned. They want, they, they, they want Russia to see that as much as they want us to see that. I mean, where the aliens come in was when... They landed in Roswell in 47, and we have been uh, reverse engineering their technology to Ever this since. point. Right. So you want to talk about aliens, we got to go way back. I that, find, that, wasn't I find that way more plausible than that wasn't a missile test of some kind. Right. And I mean, like, we want to talk about alien technology. Trust me, bro. We're not seeing alien technology because aliens have figured out that our stupid little brains can only see a stupid little portion of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. Trust me, they're they're bouncing all around at different spectrums that we can't see. They're not 
they're if they're advanced intelligence, they're not going to light up a blue light. Yeah. Maybe they light up a blue light and then come up your ass or whatever. You know, it's like if they wanted yeah, us to that see wasn't, them, that, that we wasn't would see it. Them. If they don't want us to see them, we won't. Totally, they're already in your mind. Reptilian overlords have already taken over your brain. Like, do some research, people. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I, I don't think we could end better than that. Nickel. 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 What? Five topics currently trending. Travis, want to hear about Chinese babies? Only UFOs. We're only <sighs> talking about UFOs. It's not today. a bad idea, but unfortunately, we have other news. China is enacting a two-child policy, which they expect to add three million babies a year. Around 3 million extra babies will be born each year after Beijing abolished its hugely controversial one-child policy to allow all couples to have two offspring, officials said on Tuesday. Decades of strict, sometimes brutal enforcement left the world's largest population, 1.37 billion people, aging rapidly and with a shrinking workforce that has heightened, heightened, dang, that's a tough word, so you can have two babies in China now. Man, we're going to get to like 15 billion in no Ugh. time at all. It's too many, man. Imagine, it's too many. But with that many people using the resources that we use, yeah, we're in we a lot are. of trouble. But, I mean, good for the Chinese people because there's not enough women in China. That's the problem. That's the real problem here. Not enough women in China. So it's yeah, a good thing. I don't want to hear your not enough Chinese women theory. That's the truth, man. Ask any Chinese <laughs> man. He'll tell you. Yes, that's what they all say. Clearly. Moving All on. Right, moving on. All right. Some serious business happening in Missouri. It's a crazy story, man. Um, months of student and faculty protests over racial tensions and other issues that all but paralyzed the University of, Miss, Miss, yeah, University of Missouri campus culminated Monday in an extraordinary coup for the demonstrators. As the president of the university system resigned and the chancellor of the campus said there, that he would step down to a less prominent role at the end of the year. The threat of a boycott by a Missouri football team dealt the highest profile blow to the president, Timothy M. Wolf, and the chancellor, R. Bowen Lofton. But anger at the administrator at the administration had been growing since August when the university said it would stop paying for health insurance for graduate teaching and <clears throat> research assistance. So this is pretty big for the power of sports is what all the everybody's using that angle. I what think, think that's where the that? focus should be is I don't I'm right. I am aware of uh, vaguely of what set it off. I knew there was something I knew it was something racial and that they didn't feel that the president acted in a way that was uh and essentially nothing was done or not enough by their standards, you know. I think I think they offered what it was, they offered like internet uh sensitivity oh, training geez. or something like that to the people who did it. That was the punishment. So that kind of set everything off. Well, no, but I th- I think I think it's important for Every college sports program, especially the big ones, basketball, football, things of that nature, to take notice and understand that you can that that's how you that's how you get change is you affect people's bottom line, right? And to to think about yeah. how much money would have been lost if they stopped playing football, and to be able to get that many people on board with it, that's that's very important. I heard a million dollars. It was it's literally a million dollars college football game yeah. in Missouri, and that's probably low compared to you know bigger programs and when you start and especially when you start uh affecting people's tv money it's not just it's not just ticket yeah. sales it's tv money if, if you yeah, know imagine sure. if and a program who has a, he, a, a program like notre dame who has a huge television contract if for whatever reason they decided to boycott a season i mean maybe to maybe to try and get college payer college players paid if they were to boycott a whole season and the entire football program was behind it how quickly would a change come let's move, move on, on. We have very important things to talk about. Daniel Fleetwood, the first Star Wars fan to see The Force Awakens, is dead at 32. Daniel Fleetwood, the terminally ill young man whose dying wish was to see Star Wars, The Force Awakens, has died at age 32. 
Fleetwood suffered from spindle cell sarcoma, which is a rare connective tissue cancer, and in July, his doctors gave him two months to live. The Star Wars fan's last wish was to see The Force Awakens, and it was granted by Disney, Lucasfilm, and director J.J. Abrams, who recently showed Fleetwood an unfinished cut of the film at his home. Abrams also called Fleetwood to deliver the good news, which his family said meant a lot to him. So uh, what he, uh, when people caught word of his dying wish, there was an uh, online campaign, and even actors like Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher were retweeting with the hashtag uh, Force for Daniel, and eventually it got into the, uh, into the hands of J.J. Abrams and Lucasfilm and them, and they let him see it. I think that's pretty awesome. It is pretty cool. It's a little strange. Would that be your dying wish? Not mine, but I could see that. I could see that being the case for a lot of if I, I I would know a lot of people in if they were in that situation would probably want the exact same right thing. Right now, especially that's yeah. not that out of the blue. Yeah, I'm just glad it could happen. I'm not saying it is. It's just it's a little peculiar. Why is that? But so, yeah, that is. It why is, really is that cool. so peculiar? I just you know. Bigger things, bigger things than a Star Wars but movie out there. I, for for what was, I mean, I doubt that he's. What's he going to go return a punt for the Patriots? I don't think he's in a position to do yes. a ton of stuff <laughs> in game. No, and it's not like it, it was a petition started by other people, and he, it, you know, I don't think he he probably had a, said something, but he didn't put it together the whole campaign, you know. He didn't put no, he didn't put it together. People did it on his behalf. That's what I'm saying. It, it went viral. Yeah. It went viral yeah. and like blew up and I think that's really awesome. Cool that's yeah, a, that's, that's one of the cool just... that's one of the rare social media got it right kind of things. Moving on. All right, moving on. Uh, looks like it's gonna be the end of the Shamu show. Are you sad? Nope. In a way it is sad. It's weird, but it's kinda sad. It's outdated. SeaWorld and yeah, like the the negatives outweigh the positives, but it is such a strange, bizarre thing that we train these awesome animals to and we had shows to see it it's pretty pretty nuts yeah it's uh sea world let me get this started sea world in a move to rebuild its brand and combat declining attendance will phase out its traditional shamu show in san diego and replace it w- with one that is less about tricks and more about orca's natural behaviors in the wild um next year will be the last for the theatrical performances and coming in 2017 will be what sea world entertainment describes as the entirely new orca experience designed to take place in a more natural setting i'm pretty sure as of right now that they're not doing the the show like they were with trainers where the trainers aren't in the water Good. with them anymore so now we're going to go to which is a great thing I was lucky enough to meet the director of Blackfish, Gabriella Cowperthwaite, and she was an awesome person. She's taken a lot of heat for that movie, you know, but she couldn't be a nicer, sweeter, more real person. So I pretty much buy her argument and don't think a lot of the negative things about her that have been written are true. So this is a great thing, but I'm just saying, what a bizarre time. And have you ever seen a Shamu show? Yeah. You've seen one, right? Yeah. Back in the day? It was fine. I mean, real, it's, right? it's incredible. It's cool. It's fine. But I'm am I more than okay with it being done? Sure. It was it wasn't such yeah. a grand experience. Like it was the same with the circus. I I saw, I went to the circus a couple times as a kid and it was cool. But then when I hear about oh they're not doing the the elephants anymore or they're not doing the lions anymore, I'm totally fine with that. It's we we've evolved fortunately, and our our mild amusement Would isn't okay? worth torturing and doing unnatural things to these animals. What if we clone or genetically modify killer whales? Can we then put them in pens, like if they're made? No, Doctor Moreau, you can't. Why not? What's gonna happen? Leave them alone. Let them let, let leave animals alone. Let's just eat the ones that we need, and <laughs> leave the rest alone. All right, that's, that's enough, enough about, about Shamo. Let's move on. You want to hear about crocodiles? Crocodiles yes. to guard island prison where drug convicts must fight to survive. Indonesia is counting on crocodiles' morally incorruptible nature and complete lack of empathy to keep their drug convicts in line. In a plan that sounds like fiction but is actually 100% fact, the country's drug agency is recruiting the best and most ferocious crocs as prison guards. So in Indonesia, there's a serious problem with drugs and drug trafficking and a harsh zero-tolerance policy against offenders. This is ridiculous. The uh, prison is meant to be a special treat for traffickers on death row. 
These criminals will be the only prison inmates. The intention is to keep the men separate from people they would recruit if locked up in other facilities. So the prison will have crocodiles as guards, which isn't even the most disturbing or bizarre part of the story. The prison will be built on a remote island, completely cut off from the outside world, with crocodiles thick in its surrounding waters. But doesn't, like, don't they have to... Somebody has to guard that to make sure that people don't go to that. Why don't people just ride boats to this place, kill all the crocodiles, take the people out, and leave? It doesn't make any sense. There has to be guards. Apparently not. A crocodile is not going to keep anybody out from freeing prisoner. If it's their, if it's a drug lord who has money, but there's no get them, the, know. their point is there's there might be guards at some point in the water or somewhere along the path. But the point is the island itself has nobody on it but the prisoners and crocodiles. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't fucking work. I still think it's a better prison system to me. Yeah, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I didn't say it was a good idea. It's the dumbest plan I've ever heard. <laughs> C'est de la vérité que je compte mettre sur le tapis En gros, dis-leur que mon rap est une menace pour les régler Ta mère, le missile est lancé Dis-leur que c'est trop tard pour le désamorcer Même si sa présence n'est pas annoncée Dis-leur que mon rap connaît sa cible Sa trajectoire fédérateur Donc pas là pour que les gens restent assis Dis-leur que le missile est lancé Dis-leur que c'est trop tard pour le désamorcer Même si... Jessie's favorite part of the show From last week Hello, folks. All right, I don't normally do this, but there were so many gems last week, I'm going to give you some runners-up for my favorite part. One, the Clit Festival was being held in a town called Aspontis, in a region of Spain that sounded a lot like fellatio. Two, Travis expressing his hatred of Aaron Sorkin, then immediately conceding he hadn't really watched the good things Aaron Sorkin had done. And three, Derby asking what the odds were that one of the few books he's read recently was The Da Vinci Code. I'd say pretty good, considering it was a bestseller made into a major motion picture. If it had been some obscure nonfiction about South American spiders, that would have been odd. But my favorite part? Quote, You don't drop a buck 85 on a fool and not walk home with a bucket of chicken, you know what I mean? Yeah, everyone knows what you mean, Derby. Even without the context, it makes sense. Because as we all know, a buck eighty-five shouldn't be the proper sale price for an entire bucket of chicken. Not good chicken, anyway. No premier establishment in the chicken bucket industry would vend for such an insulting exchange. A buck eighty-five? Maybe for a piece. You want a wing? I can do it for a buck eighty-five. But if you're dealing with a fool, you wouldn't not walk home with a bucket of chicken. And I know this changes the original meaning, but I'm going to start using the phrase whenever I get someone to do something they probably shouldn't want to do. Hey Jesse, how'd you convince him to take you all the way to the Long Beach airport? Look man, you don't drop a buck 85 on a fool and not walk home with a bucket of chicken. This is Jesse, and my new favorite saying was my favorite part of last week's podcast. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, as I googled weak and weary, a strange website I came upon, known only as 86charles.com. I heard the voices of two men, one of them John, the other was Travis. He only said, To support these two fools known as Travis and John, one must go to 86charles.com. Once there, you simply click on the link, Shop as you would and do nothing more. 86charles.com gets a cut of the score. It's time for the failed athlete perspective. Travis. Yeah. Give me some. Week 8. It's actually a really nice weekend of football. A lot of close games. That Pittsburgh game was good. The Dallas game at night was good. There was a couple other. Oh, the Packers-Carolina game was good. Even the Chargers game last night was good. A lot of good games. What do you think? Is Carolina really that good? I don't know. I think it was... I don't know how it's possible. Is the Packers' defense that bad? That's the question. 37 points. That's a lot. I didn't think so. That's a lot of points, though. They're pretty old school, though. You run the ball. Cam's a monster. Throw the ball to your tight end, run the clock. You know, you got to like the way they're playing. I thought to start the season, I thought Carolina was going to be terrible because they had no offensive weapons outside of Cam Newton and Greg Olson. 
yeah, to lose Kelvin Benjamin right away, you figured that was going to be and tough. And even with Kelvin Benjamin, I thought it was still going to be tough. A, a second year, not fast wide receiver. Right. They're just they're just not playing the way everybody else is. So they obviously don't need wide receivers. When Ted Ginn's your go to guy, yeah. you're obviously and not really wide receivers and very much. They've been good though. Yeah. I mean, seven and zero or is it eight and zero? It's eight and zero, right? Yeah. Wow. You think they're the, are they the best team in the NFC? That's the question. I mean, you have to say yes because of their record. But would I put money on them right. against Arizona? No. Yeah, it depends. But on I would have said that about Green Bay too. I, I thought Green Bay would have beat them as well. Yeah, I think uh, right now you got to say they're the best in the yeah, NFC. I have to. I don't think they're better than the Patriots. They're probably they might be better than the Broncos. Who knows? Carolina, I would say yes. Speaking of Denver, what did you think of that loss? It came out real flat. Went down seventeen nothing to your boy Andrew Luck. I thought that was a little bit more about Indianapolis. I think they just needed it more. And Denver, right? Denver had so many games that they probably shouldn't have won. Something was bound to catch up. Right. It was really the a head rolled. Right. Pep Hamilton got fired, and they're like, "Oh, okay, people are going. We better step yeah. it up." Right. That it always works when you mix it up. Probably should have been the head coach. Maybe I or I don't know. I don't. Maybe they didn't. Work. They're not ready to get rid of Pagano. No. So. Come on. Somebody had to go. That would not. Have, that would not have fixed what the the problem was in. Was not addressing the personnel in the off season. Well, Jim Irsay is a piece. He's of kind crap, of a lunatic, allegedly. But whatever. Yeah, everything I've heard about him seems like he's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't argue the point. Not imagine that an owner that's a piece right, of crap. A rich, old, a rich old white guy is kind of a piece of garbage. White what dude, a shot. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, so what else do you see around the league? We got some injuries. Cincinnati still looks good. There's de- yeah, injuries are. If if Roethlisberger's out for the year, that's Pittsburgh's done, obviously. But even if he misses, yeah, if he misses more than two games, I think they're definitely done. Um, what else we got? Oh man, you know who killed me this weekend? Fantasy. Fantasy. D'Angelo Williams. People just got him off the waiver wire. He put up a 40. That was rough if you were going against D'Angelo this week. Yeah, I, I went against him, but I was still in the mix. I just screwed up and didn't have Breeze in the game. Right. That's just you – know, that would have been almost a wash. Yeah. But you know what my least favorite thing to do? Coming into like a Monday night when you need Jay Cutler to get Ugh, you points. No, thank you. That's why he's never on like my, he's never on my team ever. Never had him once. <sighs> yeah. This is your two quarterback league where I had to pick up a third guy because Roethlisberger keeps on getting hurt. I think I would have rather uh, plugged in somebody and this week, else. Well, Carson Palmer was on a bye, so I, you know, he was my third guy. It's hard to get a better third guy oh, than that Cutler. in a quarterback league, a two quarterback oh, league. Cutler. I would, I think I'd rather have Johnny Football than Cutler. No way. He's actually he's no. Been I know numbers wise. I'm talking from a personal year. standpoint. Yeah, and just watch why because he took over for Jake Plummer. You'll you know exactly. We don't ask like you don't know. You know exactly why. <laughs> we don't need to reopen the wound. Although I did have this conversation uh, with someone last night about, about Plummer, Cutler and Plummer. Oh, uh, why you just hate him? Yeah, you can never. I told him I was like, him. I like the Bears as an organization. I cannot root for them while while Cutler's there. And I told him why. And the the woman actually happened to be a Broncos fan, so she agreed with me wholeheartedly. Uh, I love. It sounded like like a, a cloud of darkness just crept well, over. Well, because we started talking about the devil. All right, let's get you happy again. Let's talk about the greatest team that we've seen since the Phoenix Suns with Steve Nash. I'm like my fantasy team. Golden State Warriors. Yeah, 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 to play a fantasy. Golden State Warriors. Ah, yes. The Man, Warriors. they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. They are. I'm trying to get Steph Curry from Trevor. <laughs> I uh, I offered him Kobe and Kevin Durant for Steph and Brandon Knight. Did you make that trade? Mm, no, I don't. I don't trade Curry. There's no one I trade Curry for. Yeah, no, he's too much. I just saw him the other night, and I remember how much fun it was to have him on my team last year. I would have had – yeah, the, oh, the only reason on the I would board, move I Curry's if I had, up. like, two major injuries and someone was willing to overpay for him. But other than that, no. I'm still 
I'm still high on Durant. I'm not selling on Durant by any means, but I just like watching Curry. I think Durant might actually end up having a better year if he stays healthy. Well, that's because Curry's only going to play but, three quarters a game. Yeah, at this point, huh? Luke Walton, man, you believe? Is Luke Walton the, the answer? No. I think it's a good I think it's He's a good like, system and I think with those with that group of players, I don't think I think even Steve Kerr didn't have to do much. I'm not trying to take away from him, but Mark no, Jackson had a good the system team beforehand. Steve Kerr yeah. had a good team. And then he Luke Walton has a good team. The one thing that's consistent was the team. It seems like the coach is secondary to that unit. All right. Uh how uh how about those uh Clippers? Like the Clippers? No, I don't like watching the Clippers. They're I mean, it, okay, I won't even say like was, this. they're they're an entertaining team to watch, but I they're kind of hard to root for for me. Yeah, why is that exactly? Is it just I, who do you not I like? Just, I, is it Blake? I don't know. Just Blake the the combination. Games. They just kind of seem like babies and just don't. Yeah. Yeah. I like them more than I like Houston. I've never been. <coughs> but I don't. I've never there's been not a, a lot of teams that I would root for Paul them fan. over. Chris Paul's too much of a Napoleonic complex for me. Yeah, I just I can't deal with him. I, I I liked them more when they were in the in their initial inception and they were still kind of the underdogs and now they're just that team that doesn't get over the hill and bitches about it. Uh, but the, I do like that rivalry because I am so high on the Warriors and I don't like the Clippers. It's fun to watch the Warriors win, especially, but they don't like each other either, so that helps. Yeah, I do. I do like their rivalry, and for fantasy purposes, I root for DeAndre Jordan and JJ Reddick. Ugh, no thanks. Come on, that's a great two to have. Goodbye, goodbye free throw category. That's what JJ's there for. He balances out DeAndre. I guess they balance each other out, huh? Um. Good if you point. combine to those but, two, that's a perfect NBA player. You know who's the perfect NBA player? It's early, but it looks like it's going to be Carl Anthony Towns, Come man. On. It's killing it for me. 17 If you're talking about the points, second best 13 rookie rebounds. In the league, sure. He's got he had 3 3 blocks. He gets me 3 4 blocks a night. He's a monster. I don't I'm I only partially disagree with you. There's just one better rookie. But I like young athletic fit yeah, men. Like I don't know if we could throw your boy in there. He's not he's not there yet. Who's who's my boy? Kristaps Porzingis. That's not how you say it. Kristaps Porzingis. <laughs> oh my rookie bad. of the year. My bad. Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, I'm still gonna. I'm not giving up on Booker just best yet. Best pick of but, best uh, pick Carl of the Anthony fantasy Towns. draft in the last round. Kristaps Porzingis. I will give you that. That's better than my Kobe pick. Long Bobby is a bloody hunker. I've got big news. news. It's not actually news. I'm uh I'm just worried, man. It's not looking good so far. Suns, I think we're three and three. It's, uh, did I jinx you? Did I good. did I jinx the squad by drafting Keith? Yeah, nobody wants. If you own Marquise <laughs> Morris, it's just bad for it's bad for everything. Send me Marcus a trade Morris off. Morris looked pretty good. He's been looking good still. Nah, I don't. I don't know I'll if I want. Take that Durant it. dude. I'll off take Bledsoe. I'll trade you Marcus for Marquise. <laughs> deal. No deal. That way you get a hold on to Morris. Come on, you can hold no on to Morris. I haven't. It's it's too early to say, but I'm just. They look so mediocre. There's nothing nothing inspiring about how they're playing yet. It, it'll change. I think Hornacek's a good enough coach, but I just I'm not excited I, yet. But at least they're not the Pelicans. At least they didn't start zero and seven, so we still got a shot. Point. All right, what else you what else you got about basketball? Anything else? Um. It's time for the Facebook World News Update. This Real to Someone News Update is brought to you by the government. They said that's all you need to know. A man in Los Angeles said all day McDonald's breakfast and daylight savings. He has no idea what time it is. A woman in California said she will fight for you every day she is alive. She can overcome the struggles and she will be stronger than yesterday. This she promises you. Heart emoji. A man in Hollywood said Clint Eastwood has always been an asshole. Now he can be Trump's butt buddy. Assholes to the end. F Clint Eastwood. Engine, 
나로가 이룩하기 시작했습니다. 발사체가 이룩했습니다. A man in Los Angeles said, Dear Actors Access, stop with the 22 bucks a clip BS. You do know we are all starving, right? Hashtag Actors Life. A man in California said, Killed back and buys today. Winter gain goals in full swing. Hashtag Beast Mode. A woman in Los Angeles said she isn't feeling 100%, but she made a commitment to change her habits and get beastie results the last 90 days of the year. So she is walking to the gym, gonna sweat it out, keeping herself accountable by sharing, blushing smiley face, and a diamond. This Real to Someone news update is brought to you by the government. They said that's all you need to know. For Mr. Charles, who's 86 Charles. This is Charles. Charles, 86 himself. Say, hey, man, time to go. Get the f out of here. You're 86. Boop, 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 boop. I didn't mean to take up all your sweet time. I'll give it right back to you one of these days. 86 Charles, 86Charles.com. I've brought bread. To men, women, and children. I've brought water with lemon for the table. I have hot tea. Can I box that for you? I'll bring your change. Okay, so we're going to, we have this tradition of going to lunch for everybody's birthday, right? And so we had this new employee who shall remain nameless, who essentially decided to plan her own birthday party. Correct. Which basically started off by her sending emails to different people in the department demanding that they send her uh, e-birthday greetings. Correct. I didn't get one. But she's like, you need to send me an e-birthday greeting. So everyone's like, Whoa, okay. So then uh, the plan was to go to P.F. Chang's, right? So then she left early to go to P.F. Chang's. In fact, left a pension and health meeting, right? And said, hey, I, I can explain all this retirement stuff to you. We got to go to my birthday. Correct. Grabbed my friend and made him go early to P.F. Chang's where she proceeded to redecorate the whole restaurant. Correct to celebrate her birthday. So when every, like the other 12 of us get to the restaurant, we find there's, there's balloons and crap everywhere. And didn't the, um, <laughs> didn't the, um, the guy, like the waiter people were like, what is this woman's problem? And we're completely annoyed with us the entire time. So then she also, um, I didn't just say her name, did I? No. So she also, uh, made us play games. So she had those little things where you pull the string and they go, yeah. you know, 
And that's when the waiters actually got mad, too, because we're, like, shooting off noisemakers all over. do that in a restaurant. Yeah. And so then we had to play a game, like, more than one game, like a crossword puzzle and whatever. But that actually, for me, the personal highlight was, so we're, we're in IT, and so maybe something you don't understand about IT is there's a lot of people whose Engl- English is a second language, you know, who are, who are very, very educated and very good at what they do. However, English is a second language, so I don't really understand a lot of colloquialisms. So, of course, everyone fails, except for, like, the two of us who, you know, English is our first language. So, anyway, we think that she just rigged it so she could win. But So, she won the gift at our own present, at our own birthday party that she planned. For herself. For herself. And then, soon thereafter, she yelled at someone on the front porch and no longer works with us. That's a whole whole other story. That's a whole other story. But, the kicker, the kicker at the birthday party was she brought ice cream, outside ice cream cake. (laughs) That she hid under the table because the restaurant manager had already forbidden any outside food from being eaten. So she brings out the cake, even though the cake wasn't supposed to be there. And she asked the waiter to go get a spatula and a knife so she can cut the cake that wasn't even supposed to be there so we could all eat it. That's the end. That's the end. That's the end. Thank you. And that was our good friend Deb Loftus. Another awesome story. Thanks, Deb. It's always good to just hear Deb's voice. You know? So soothing. You know what I hate more than anything in the world? Mm. People planning and just making the biggest deal about their own birthday. Yeah, it's pretty awful. Blah! So disgusting. I hate it. It's pretty awful behavior. You know how I usually doodle with my pen while I'm sitting here? Luckily, my pocket knife was sitting next to my pen today, so I started stabbing at my notebook. <laughs> it just, it's like, it's so disgusting. Uh, I sent out an email. You need to send me e, uh, e cards. Yeah. I want people to say happy birthday, and then we're going to go to P.F. Chang's. Uh, and then I brought some games for us to play. And, uh, and can you imagine on the, we've all had these tables where they're just like starting to hang stuff up, and you're just like, you're, how long are you gonna be here? First oh, of all, this worst. is a nightmare. Especially when it's like, and when it's, you find out it's for their own birthday, it's just so sad. Right. And they invite so many people who don't want to be there, so it's like people probably aren't even gonna eat because they think they can get in and out. And then she's got games Ugh. planned, and she brings her. I own could cake. I probably could have suffered through all of it until the noisemakers. That's where I would have drawn the line. That's where I would have said, yeah. "Okay, I'm out. Ugh. I'm not pulling the string on this in a restaurant in the middle of the day." Yeah. Ah. Um, did he say it was an ice cream cake? That's what I thought yes. I heard the first time. So it's just sitting. It's probably become this melted. Yeah. Goopy I had that same thought. Garbage. By the time she got it, yeah, because I was expecting that to be where they went with it. But great story. Just, yeah, I could. I felt I uncomfortable just listening to that. Can you imagine? Yeah, just Deb sitting there, like, because she's so nice. Like, I would have been sitting there drinking whiskey, and I would just increasingly would have gotten more pissed off. <laughs> and eventually I would have I would have been making fun of her the whole time, and then and then eventually I would have been, like, say something really mean, and I have to leave. <laughs> that's just, that's exactly what Yeah, the, the only thing that would have made that more uncomfortable was drunk Travis showing up being yeah. like, I can't believe you have to plan your own birthday. Nobody <laughs> likes you. I'm Batman. Like, it would have started with Robin. So, yeah, don't. Don't inv- don't invite me to your self planned birthday party. I'm not a good. I'm not a good. We should guest. offer you as a service. Okay, if you end up like in an awkward <laughs> totally party situation that. and we need someone to come and blow it up, Trunk Travis should show up and just drop <laughs> some real harsh truth on people. <laughs> I'm just wearing my robe. I just stroll in with flip flops. I'm like, hey. Uh, first of all, whiskey. Put it on her tab. The birthday girl. Just stay in your true detective outfit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks again to Deb Always killing it with your stories Seriously. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening Big shout out to Deb Thank you to Jesse of course Shout out to Donna June uh, Who else we gotta thank? Uh, let's thank Let's thank Gary and Chunky in advance I think they're gonna give us some stories coming up Gary and Chunky killing it Out on the west side of LA uh, Who else should we thank? Thank America Let's thank the veterans. The veterans, of thank course. Thank you to the veterans. Today is Veterans Day. This is this will post tomorrow, but <clears throat> thanks to the vets 
putting all the hard work. Certainly appreciate that. Even if even if you're not even if you're anti-military, don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, right? you can I don't. I, you can be as anti-government and military as you want, but I don't know anyone that's anti-soldier. Right. I mean, I th- I think there was a time in the '90s where people were really. Or maybe, maybe I, I guess the '90s for me, but it was really like after like Vietnam, where people were like spitting on soldiers and stupid stuff as they came back. Right, like, but you're you're, you're expressing you're expressing a frustration to the wrong people. Correct, correct. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That is one way to put that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where can we find the podcast, John Derby? I think you should always start at eighty six charles dot com. Eighty six charles dot com. You can find us on Instagram and the Twitter at Company Blaster. We're on Tumblr. We're on Stitcher. We're on Pod Directory. We're everywhere. Oh, I've got a... Um, so every once in a while on Facebook, we like to promote to get it out to some new listeners. Sure. This week I tried to promote, and I'm guessing... Because usually it goes under a time of review, and then they post yeah. it. But it, it never said that I was accepted, but it never said that I was denied. And then, like, the campaign ended, but, like, the money didn't go through. And the only thing I can think is because I put KKK in the thing. Like, they wouldn't promote it because it was, like, anonymous outs KKK members and KKK Halloween costumes or but something then wouldn't like they that. Have, but then don't they edit that for you? I thought they would have either denied me or, yeah, edited it, but they didn't do either. So it never got promoted. They just, like, they're like, oh, we're not touching that. Like, they don't touch. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe that's their policy. Interesting. So I won't be putting KKK in any yeah, more headlines, fair at least on the Facebook promote. <laughs> which screw the KKK. They don't need any promotion. And then they're not going to let this episode get promoted because you know it wasn't a missile test. Right. No, it was clearly aliens, clearly aliens. hiding behind clouds. Story broken uh, by John American Derby. Idiots. I want you to leave America with and the world really because we're bigger than America with one word. I got nothing. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> I'm like, right, one well, word. I don't even I'll, know what to say. I'll think of the first word that came to my mind. Onomatopoeia. <laughs> so stupid. I don't know why that came to my mind, but it did. I don't know either. You're welcome, America. <laughs> <That's the worst. laughs> we leave you with that, America. Onomatopoeia. He's there just to take good care of me Like he's one of the family